one brilliant idea can change the world. That's all it takes. It could come from any time or place, no matter how unlikely. And that one idea can have a legacy far beyond what it should be capable of. Because all it takes is one idea to reach millions. The idea that I'm referring to is a man who has had a lot of ideas. An artist by the name of Mikey Larson, also known as the late great MC Idea. Idea is one of the greatest underground rappers of all time. Hailing from St. Paul, Minnesota, Mikey became something of a prodigy in the hip-hop scene of the area, learning to break dance and mastering the art of rap at a very young age. He was impressively able to rap while spinning on his head and breakdancing, but after being diagnosed with arthritis as a teenager, he left breaking behind to focus on rapping. Mikey is best known as one of the greatest freestyle rap battlers of all time. His ability to come up with creative bars in real time and deliver them in a way that felt like they were planned and plotted for months is unparalleled. He became a titan of the backpack battle rap scene, most notably winning Scribble Jam in 1999 and both Rocksteady and the Blaze Battle in 2000. Check it out. The only way you win is if I let you win. The difference between me and you is that size, grown, that's for zip, whatever. Curly boy, you can't come with noise. You're just annoyed. Wanna be like a BC boy? So I don't even want to say this. You can laugh at me. You bitch your whole style for both thugs and harmony. For winning the Blaze Battle, Along with his prize money, he was offered a deal to sign with P. Diddy, but he declined, and instead helped Slug build his label Rhyme Sayers Entertainment. That just proves how much Mikey cared about the culture, and I'm sure he could have signed with Diddy and made a lot more money, but he kept the art as his priority, and that helped him build a legacy as a lyricist with the artist that he truly respected most. After an EP called The Whereabouts of Hidden Bridges with the Minnesota group Odd Jobs, Idea linked up with DJ Abilities, the partner that he would become most known for his work with, and the duo's work together would become most of their most iconic work. Idea and Abilities were like brothers in real life, and even closer on Wax, quickly becoming one of the best rapper-producer duos of all time. They released the album Firstborn in October of 2001, a project which is often cited as one of the best underground rap albums of all time, and it's easy to see why. The lyricism is the perfect blend of lyrical acrobatics and thought-provoking concepts and themes, and Abilities provides the perfect backdrop for Idea to work his magic on. It captures that early 2000s Rhyme Sayers underground sound, but has a throwback feel as Abilities scratches up the whole record, placing this album as a work that stands with hip-hop classics from years earlier. The album features regular brag tracks like One, which is an incredible opener, but also has these unique concept tracks that could only come from Idea's head. Birth of a Fish is exactly what the title sounds like it is. It's the existential thoughts of a man who thinks that he's a man, but is realizing that he's actually a fish. It sounds outrageous, and it is, but it's really a thought-provoking philosophical song that you can bump with any other boom bap classic from the era. It said you live inside a head that reminds me of my glass box And everyone's the same, all brains are contained by your reality frame And change with the terrain, it's trained not to change And once you see what I've explained, you hit the jackpot yeah. And at that very moment, it was like my eyes really opened The air that previously surrounded me was now an ocean filled And that's not the only song that gets philosophical The very next song, Powdered Water 2, starts off by quoting Plato in the very first line Idea is able to take these thought-provoking ideas and filter them through his punchline-focused rap style that forces knowledge to infiltrate your ears under the guise of being straight-up entertaining to listen to. And it's not just lyrical miracle mumbo-jumbo. He gives us emotional vulnerability crossed with technical mastery on every track. In fact, he really blazed a trail for rappers to be vulnerable about things like mental health within their music. His song A Murder of Memories is a harrowing tale of a soldier coming back from war and suffering from PTSD. The Dive 1 and 2 are the emotional peak of the album. Part 1 details the rapper's experience with psychosis and mental health, and then Part 2 has him rapping from the point of view of after he's mastered his own mind, and the peace that he feels once it's all over. I know a lot of this subject matter may seem heavy, but don't let that deter you. This is such a fun album. You can hear the love for hip-hop in every second of sound that the duo gives us. And while the duo was just getting started together, Idea's next effort would be as a solo artist. Mikey released The Many Faces of Oliver Hart in July of 2001. Since this wasn't released under the name Idea, I feel like it often gets overlooked, but this album is just as amazing lyrically as his other work. The album was entirely written and produced by Mikey, with the exception of two feature verses from Slug and Carnage. For an artist who's always so vulnerable on all of his records, this might be his most personal work of art. 
showcasing the many sides of his personality and not having to share the spotlight with any other artists. Weird Side is an ode to all the outcasts out there and details what makes Mikey weird. The production for the most part of the album is jazzier and feels native tongues-esque at times, so it's a cool change of pace from his A&E records. The best song on the album by far is Step by Step. The song takes place in the afterlife, after Mikey has died. Expecting to find heaven, he instead comes to a fork in the road, with an angel on each path. The angels let him know that one always tells the truth, and one always lies, and he has to ask one of them a question in order to reach the gates of heaven. It's a quandary that has been discussed for ages, and Idea brilliantly poses it in the language of hip-hop. I didn't care much for life, but I'd have tried to stay alive forever if I knew this is what death was like. I was never good at problem solving, especially in emergencies. I get a tad bit nervous when concerned with burning for eternity, but anyways, I asked them which one lied, and they pointed at each other. After this record's release, he reunited with his partner Abilities to release their self-titled album, ENA. You can definitely hear both members of the duo improve since their debut. Idea always was an incredible lyricist, but now he's mastered his many different flows, switching from his slower, thoughtful delivery with a fast double-time flow that would make Twista and Eminem hit the treadmill. Now start it off with my favorite song on the album. Idea absolutely thrashes his verses, and Abilities shows off his new mastery of sampling, blending in Andre 3000 saying yeah to bounce off the hook and then closing the track off with scratches over an electric guitar solo. And that leads right into Kept, which is the duo's ode to the early days of hip-hop, with talk of b-boying and scratches to make Primo pleased. This album overall is more accessible than Firstborn. Even their more conceptual tracks like Exhausted Love, Star Destroyer, and Glass don't delve as deep into the depths of the human mind and lean more into just being some fun story tracks. This project definitely feels like the idea that the world knew from the battle rap circuit. Overall, this album may not be as iconic as their first, but it's just as good and possibly even more entertaining. After this, the duo took a brief hiatus for a couple years. In 2006, Idea created a rock group called Carbon Carousel and released their only album as a group, The Sum of All Things, or The Healing Power of Scab Picking. I'm not too knowledgeable about rock music, so it's hard for me to speak on this one in detail, but this album is abrasive, emotional, and experimental. Definitely check this one out if rock is your thing. It's got a really cool and unique sound to it. I don't think it's worth the cast of all the by me all the way to call mine. I don't care, glad to finally get some clarity and bring my teeth to call me train the morning sick. I had a good hunt for someone to pour me over down the water walk and serve until I drop. In that same year he released the album This Is Where We Were as the frontman of another group called Face Candy. The group is described as an improvisational jazz rap group, with all their music being freestyled live, from the lyrics to the live instrumentation. This project lives right at the point where hip hop and spoken word poetry meet, and I love it for that. Where do we take ourselves? Where do we carry ourselves? Embrace ourselves before we break our health. Cause the only thing we're looking at is the scraping, melting trees that are scathing, bathing in the dissected, unprotected, corrective, scathing. The, world. the group released a second project in 2011 called Waste Age Teenland, but fans were eager to hear Mikey link back up with Abilities for some more classics from the duo. In 2009, he and Abilities reunited once again for By the Throat. This album combines Idea and Abilities hip hop mastery with their newfound rock experimentation. It combines indie rock with underground hip hop in a way that feels like an enhancement of the two and not a watering down. Lyrically, this album deals with pain and loss, so much that it's almost hard to listen to knowing what would happen to the rapper just two years later. My favorite song on here is probably this story which details Idea's life from being a single-celled amoeba all the way until his current struggles. When I was young, I was a single-celled amoeba. Then I learned how to go to war over ideas. Now I'm in the strip and mother earth over resources, waiting for the day that today's considered prehistoric. And I know this video is focused on Idea, but Ability's progression as a producer is incredible. And this album is some of the best and most groundbreaking that underground hip-hop has to offer. And then Smile proves that he hasn't fully moved on from his roots in hip-hop lyricism, spitting one of the best story tracks of his career. At the turn of the decade, Idea was evolving as an artist, growing into one of the most talented and unique artists on the planet, but unfortunately we were not able to see what he was fully capable of. On October 16, 2010, Mikey Larson passed away in his sleep from an accidental overdose. 
His absence left a humongous hole in the underground hip hop community, one that could never be filled. After his death, a second Face Candy album was released, as well as the only live performance that he was able to have with his new experimental rock group called Guitar Party, and a 2015 solo Idea album was released called The Many Faces of Mikey, and they even released a long lost Idea and Abilities album from the 90s, back when the duo went under the name Sixth Sense. His fans along with his fellow underground wordsmiths have been very vocal about spreading the music, art, and legacy of Idea, and that's not going to stop anytime soon. Idea's influence in the battle rap and underground hip hop scenes are felt today and will be felt forever. Rest in peace, Idea. Thanks for watching everybody. I've been wanting to make this video for a while so I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know down in the comments what is your favorite Idea song or album. As always, let me know if there's any other artists you'd like to see me cover. And if you enjoy the content and want to leave a like and subscribe to the channel, that is always appreciated. I should have a Native Tongues video coming at you guys very soon, so look out for that. Thanks for watching.